happened just like that has been a disappointment to Sex and the City fans since the beginning. But as it nears the end of its second season, is the show finally starting to get its magic back? Before the show aired, we were all so excited about the prospect of getting to see our faves on screen again. Though with tempered expectations because we all remember what happened with the movies. <laughs> But when And Just Like That premiered, it felt pretty much like a completely unrelated show that just happened to have characters that shared the same names as Sex and the City leads. Despite the show desperately trying to prove how updated and totally hip with the times it was, Woke moment. Miranda's character being completely ruined, the characters becoming so wealthy that none of their problems seemed real anymore, we kept hate watching, hoping that maybe sometime soon it would start to feel something like the old show we knew and loved. After a season and a half, we started to lose faith. But then, somewhere in the middle of season two, the show started giving off sparks that evoked Sex in the City's magic. Old characters are feeling more like themselves, new characters are becoming more relatable, and Aiden Shaw has returned once again. And just like that, Aiden and I we're back on the same page. So we couldn't help but wonder, is And Just Like That finally getting its mojo back? A huge issue with And Just Like That, up until now, has been the fact that not only did none of the main characters feel anything like they did in Sex and the City, no one on the show really seemed like an actual person. Carrie, Charlotte, and Miranda felt detached from each other, both emotionally and physically, and each were given new, diverse sidekicks that didn't seem to have a purpose beyond letting the writers say, Look, we listen. Please clap. But in late season two, things just might be turning around. Though no one could ever replace Samantha, the characters have finally started summoning some of their charm by putting themselves and sometimes their careers first, in spite of their partners. Naya is using her legal skills to file her own divorce. My divorce papers. You're doing it yourself? Yeah. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. It's a no-fault divorce. Lisa Todd Wexley won't sideline her career for her husband's. I just meant why don't you come and say a quick hello at my event, and then you can go to yours? Did it ever cross your mind that maybe you could go do a quick hello at your event and then go to mine? And she'll even walk through a bomb cyclone to make it to her event. Seema is getting her own Hamptons house with Carrie. But you and me with our own two bed, three baths on the beach. Fun, fabulous. Not tragic at all. And Che is finally getting a chance to step out and fill their own space as a character. Maybe something like, um, the widow wand doesn't come with a lifetime guarantee, but then neither did my husband. That's good. And now Miranda can hopefully stop acting like a possessive, out of touch Che Diaz groupie and start acting like Miranda again. Their breakup lent some much needed emotional depth to Che's character, who has often felt more like a cartoon caricature of every leftist stereotype than a real person for most of the show. It was also great to see Miranda inspired by Naya and finally getting the kick in the pants she needed to move on from her marriage. Okay. Well, uh. You enjoy your locally sourced organic sex, and uh, I'll start writing up the divorce papers. Charlotte, Sex in the City's resident prude, is working to shake off her Puritan habits by supporting her daughter when she wants to lose her virginity, even in a snowstorm, by buying her prophylactics. Please! My daughter needs condoms! And it looks like the show is finally going to start focusing on Charlotte herself as an individual person, separate from her kids. One of the main issues with her recent storylines has been a lack of time dedicated to her interiority. To quote an accidentally very high Charlotte York, What happened? Where am I in all this? But now she's accepted a job at a gallery, just like she was working at in Sex and the City. I have got to get back to me. Sex in the City was at its core about a tight-knit group of women who were balancing love, friendship, and careers. And just like that, however, has felt incredibly imbalanced, with too many characters who aren't even all friends with one another, and so many jumbled plot lines that no one's story really gets fleshed out. So to see the balance shift more towards the core tenets of Sex in the City feels like a comforting and less chaotic return to form. There are also some other joyful moments that signal and just like that may be able to be taken off life support. The 
show is finally finding its footing with fashion again, too. One breathtaking moment this season saw Carrie, Lisa Todd Wexley, and Charlotte looking exceedingly glamorous and impractical during a bomb cyclone, which felt very sex in the city, and it was very on brand for a finally single Miranda to have a meet cute that ends up giving her the ick. Carrie, I may be different, but dating isn't. It's still a shit show. A cat shit show. Even just seeing Carrie and Miranda walk and talk on the street instead of fretting about Che Diaz feels refreshing. Sure, and in just like that's weird weird, things are often clunky. When I needed to push, you really got me going. I got you going. I like the sound of that. But at least it's a little closer to the fun we used to have watching Sex in the City. If you're looking to take ownership of your health this summer, allow me to introduce you to my favorite new wellness product and this video's sponsor, AG1, a nutritional drink packed with daily nutrients that can keep you moving in a healthy direction. AG1 sources the best ingredients it can find, including 75 of the highest quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients, and packs them all into one scoop. It's gluten-free and dairy Free. Plus, it pairs perfectly with any diet, such as paleo, keto, vegan, and low-cal. Just scoop, stir, and drink. AG1 has so many benefits, like improved digestion and immunity support, and it even promotes clarity and focus. I've added AG1 to my morning routine. So far, it's really supporting my energy throughout the day. Even better, it also supports the foundation of your long-term gut health. I found researching and building the perfect wellness plan to be very intimidating. And if you're like me, you probably don't have a firm background in nutritional science. This is why I love AG1. They break it down into simpler terms. A healthy and thriving gut plus diverse nutrients equals a stronger wellness foundation. Click the link below, drinkag1.com slash the take to use our custom link. Support the show and improve your health goals today. Speaking of nostalgic and refreshing fun, another aspect that's giving some juice back to and just like that is the return of Aiden Shaw. After discussing Aiden at a group dinner, Carrie lets her friends and the audience know that Aiden is divorced and pretty rich after selling his company to West Elm. So of course, Carrie sends him a friendly email to see how he's doing. Remember when he was one of her first buddies on AOL? Oh my god, he's online! Did he see me? And when he asks Carrie out on Valentine's Day, the girls get into a very Sex in the City-esque conversation about whether Aiden meant to ask her out on that day in particular. And we couldn't help but smile listening to Charlotte read so much into this little detail, which felt like the good old days. Thursday? It's Valentine's Day! He asked you to dinner on Valentine's Day! No, he probably doesn't even know it's Valentine's Day. When Carrie and Aiden do meet up, they have to navigate whether they can move past their two decades worth of baggage, showing a new level of emotional weight and growth for these characters as a couple. At the restaurant, I just thought, how great. This, this feels really great. We're back where we started. But this is where we ended. And while at the end of the episode they decide to go to a hotel room and rekindle their relationship, it felt satisfying for the writers to actually bring up Carrie and Aiden's many, many issues before starting things up again. But the f***ing wall I couldn't break through and those floors, remember the floors that I redid? I mean, that's all bad. And after spending literal days in a hotel room together, they take another mature relationship step. I'd like you to meet my boys. I would like that too. The girl who couldn't even wear Aiden's engagement ring on her finger now wants to go up to Aiden's nice country house and meet his children. This is miles away from their original relationship, where it felt like every time Aiden took one step forward with Carrie, she took four leaps back. I think maybe I was always holding a piece of myself back because of Big. And unlike so many other episodes and situations of In Just Like That, Carrie and Aiden's relationship feels grounded and mature, with emotionally honest performances from Sarah Jessica Parker and John Corbett, instead of the wacky, privileged, and unrelatable mess we've been subjected to in so many prior episodes. We even see Carrie address the entire tension of Sex in the City, although we wish it was in a cheeky voiceover. I've been asking myself, was big a big mistake? Carrie was so blinded and love-bombed by Mr. Big's wealth, charm, and avoidant, insecure attachment style that she could never be objective about Big in the original series, much to the annoyance of her friends and the viewership at large. So the fact that she's finally willing to question things now signals a lot of growth. 
While the show definitely still isn't perfect and hasn't yet fully captured the magic of the original series, it has been great to watch it finally find its footing to some degree. It finally feels like the show is working to get back to its roots of friendship, love, and, well, sex. Whose turn is it to get up and close those shades? I did it yesterday. And just like that has a long way to go before it can really feel true to Sex and the City's legacy, even if we're looking at it through rose-colored glasses. We wish we could unsee and unhear Anthony's sex pun off with Drew Barrymore, for example. It got out of that Tupperware and it just kept on growing. <laughs> How big do you think it's gonna get? Honestly, I don't know. I'm surprised it's this big. But to be honest, maybe this rubric we're grading and just like that on should just be thrown out entirely. Tom Smith at Vulture has noted that if we just think of this show as a continuation of the absolutely baffling Sex and the City 2, all of its off-putting quirks do feel more like a natural progression of the franchise. And just like that creator, Michael Patrick King, once said of the original series, There's a sex story, there's a theme story, there's a love story, and then there's a funny parody story. What do you, you pick a theme, you break it into four stories, Strands, you give one story to each of the ladies. And it feels like the creative team is finally starting to understand the importance of this formula when it comes to Ingest Like That, too. Realistically, we'll never be able to get Sex in the City back. It exists in a different era, with its characters at different stages of their lives, tackling different social issues. But we can hold out hope that the rest of the season continues on its path of improvement so that maybe by season three, and just like that will be a show we watch because we genuinely love it for what it is, and not just because we're hoping hoping to rekindle an old flame. That's The Take. Click here to watch a video we think you'll love, or here to check out a whole playlist of awesome content. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications.